Join us here at Last Adam Tabernacle as we bring Christ to the nation. Glory be to God. Yes, good to see all of you. Yes, good to see George. Where is George? I heard someone say that George is around. Okay, yeah. George. <laughs> yes, George has bad manners. Okay? Yeah. Please, if you, uh, if you work abroad or you stay abroad, when you're coming back home, inform people. People might have their dimes and they want to what? <laughs> to buy stuff abroad. And when the only thing they don't have is a ticket and a visa to go and buy stuff for themselves. All right? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, we read from uh, Philippians chapter 1, from verse 20 to 25. Uh, but today, let us read from there, but starting from verse 21. Philippians chapter 21, from verse up to 25. Paul says that for me to live, okay, is Christ, and to die is gain. All right? A Christian, to live, okay, is Christ. It is basically an opportunity for Christ to live through them. For Christ to be a blessing through them. For Christ to minister to other people through them. All right? And that's what Paul was saying. That for me to live is Christ. All right? And God wants us to have the same mindset. All right? That for you to live is Christ. All right? Then he adds, or he added and say that, to die is gain. Hallelujah. To die is what? Okay? Do you really believe that? That to die is gain. All right? You don't have to believe it now, but, uh, okay? Um, make sure that you grow up eh, to understand that actually to die is gain. All right? If you are a Christian, if you're born again and walking in the ways of the Lord. Then he said in verse 22 that, but if I live on in the flesh, okay, if I don't die, this will mean fruit from my labor. All right? Okay? And we learned that uh, this means that all God would want to learn from this uh, in the sense that we shouldn't be useless. We shouldn't be what? Useless. Is it useless or useless? George, but there are some people I occasionally, you know, think about it, eh? and I'm like, man, eh? some people are brilliant. <laughs> and sometimes you can tell a brilliant person yeah, by just how they talk, how they, you know, yeah? and you are like, you know, yeah? George is among them. All right? Anyway, but so is it useless or useless? Useless. Jera. Useless, useless. <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay? Hallelujah. Flora, useless, useless. You know, we have young kids who have to learn some of the things here. Yeah. All right? There are kids now who are like, you know, yeah, like uh, Elizabeth. Uh, some kids who, their teachers are in the book. Huh? You understand? So when they are like studying math, how to learn one plus two, is equal to three. There's no one who is telling them that. There's no blackboard. There's no teacher in front of the class. So the teacher is the book. You understand? Eh? That's man. It has advantages and disadvantages. So meaning that 
there are words which they won't know how to pronounce because they have never heard someone say them. Do you understand? Eh? They have never heard someone say them. Okay? Yeah, you know, unless maybe as they are doing their work, they ask that, oh, I don't understand this. Then the teacher somehow, and knowingly, as they read what the kid hasn't understood, the kid will hear the word and say, e. you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, eh? there are kids here who don't know whether it is useless or useless. So we have to help them, all right? We have to be useful or useful to them by <laughs> helping them today <laughs> how that word is pronounced. Flora, useless. Okay. Ah. Me says it's okay. I, you know, you're the homeschool teacher. I leave that to you. Okay. So, for if I, yeah, we should learn not, we should endeavor not to be useless. All right? Okay? Museveni calls them parasites. Parasites. Do you know what a parasite is? Weavers. Hmm? There's no fumbler here. Weavers, you know. <laughs> All right? Okay? We should learn to be a blessing to others. Eh? All right? In your church, okay, be, don't be useless. Hmm? When you go to your church and you just warm pews, hmm? and you just get blessed by Esther, and her, we take in her team <laughs> partner. All right? You know, that is being a parasite. Okay? You should get something to do and you have what you're supposed to do in the body of Christ. Every person has been given a gift. And the Bible says, okay, minister that gift one to another. Are you listening to me? Amen? Hmm? Okay? When you go to your church, when you just want, what, bakusabile, bakusabile, you know, eh? Yeah, you should get to a level where by you also kusavila what? The others. Do you understand? All right? Anyway, get something to do according to the gift that God has given you. Everyone has a what? A gift. God gave you a gift. Glory be to God. Hmm? But they, even people who are not born again, they have gifts. I hope you know that. Hmm? Museven is not born again. I don't know why Abalokole Bamwe Sebakombo Molokole. He's not. And he has said it, he says it all the time. Even yesterday he hinted at it. <laughs> he says when he was in the bush, there were some guys who were whatever what? what? And he hinted that what? He worked with them. He wasn't like this. ADF guys who want to kill Baka Firi. You know, that was a hint. <laughs> a subtle hint. But at other times, they are saying it open. Okay, the things, yeah, you know. Hallelujah. Okay? So, Museveni is not born again, but the guy was born in the gift. Leadership. Okay? Leadership. Leadership is a gift. Hallelujah. It's a what? It's a gift. Hmm? And with that, I guess God was like, with his leadership gift, he needs to have an understanding of history. So God also gave him the history gift, the ability to know the past, to read it and understand it and get lessons from that. That's a gift, by the way. It's a what? It's a gift. Hmm? Sometimes you, you see him trying to, to get into things which you can see, didn't understand. He has just crammed what stuff. Like yesterday, I was talking about ukalusham, ammonium, what? Nitrate, what? what? <laughs> he, he should just have left that and just tell us what? Uh, Dutch, what? Dutch. What did he say to him yesterday? 
Dutch courage. <laughs> what anyway, that's another thing. Glory be to God. I mean, so please don't be useless in your church. Hallelujah. All right? Be like Rachel in Rachel's church. She's useful. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay? Esther in her church, she's useful. All right? Yeah, if Esther woke up today and, and then she told me that the Lord is leading her to leave, I'll say, Are you sure? <laughs> you know? Because she's you're going, are you going to lose a useful one. You know it. A person. But there are some people who are parasites. If, you know, you, you'll be like, oh, great. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> because you're like, ah, you understand. <laughs> and that. All right? Who is saying, give and nang? <laughs> I had someone say, give and nang. Okay? Everyone likes useful people. Amen? I'm reminded of Kenneth Hagin. Uh, he had a, a church member who died. Did he die or he was on his deathbed? Anyway, the guy was either dead or he was dying. He was going. Okay? He's going. And Hagin was like, God, you can't let this guy go. As in, he can't go. He can't go. I need him in the ministry. All right? I need him. Okay? So every time Hagen would be praying that, somehow the guy would come back to life. Eh? The moment Hagen would stop, the guy is going. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so good. So he went and forgot the reasons why this guy, this gentleman, shouldn't die, shouldn't depart. All right? He says, number one, anyway, he gave like three reasons why the guy shouldn't go. All right? He's like, he's the most, any, some the most, like, any useful uh, pastor. And he gave three reasons why he shouldn't go. All right? And the Lord granted him that one request. So now, when the guy came back to life, he narrated what had happened. All right? The gay man he went, <laughs> you know, he, he left. His spirit left the body. By the way, do you know that your body can still be pumping blood and what, you know, eh? but when someone already departed, eh? then what you oxygen, what you what, those machines, eh? they are helping the body breathe, but when the person already what, took off. And so he gets to heaven and he, the Lord says, man, I can't let you in. He said, why? Then from heaven, he showed him, you know, on earth, Kenneth Hagin, praying intensely why he shouldn't go. Okay? And the Lord said, I can't allow you in here. Go back. All right? And the guy came back to life. Now, whether that was good for him or bad, that's not the point. And I find that it was good, man. The guy wanted to still hang out with his wife. Eh? You know, maybe the young day, you, you know, right? Maybe I didn't pay some guy's debt, you know. Eh? <laughs> and then God, you know, the wicked borrow and what? Don't pay. And I don't want to be among them. This guy, when he was working in uh, somewhere up country in the West, yeah, you were in theater, is it? Working on a lady, and the lady died on the table. Hmm? The lady died. You see now, this is the problem. I came with my staff here. <laughs> All right? Hallelujah. So, yes, the lady died on the table. Okay? And he prayed for her to come back. And take, uh, yeah, so which was any. <laughs> so, what happened? This was a lady who came to hospital to give birth to her fourth child. She had always been giving birth to big babies, normally. So, in this fourth pregnancy, I was called from my house that there's a lady who had come with obstructed labor, unable to push. So, we go to theater. Um, 
I operate normally, everything was okay. We delivered, I think, a 4.3 kilogram baby boy. As I was, uh, you know, after I'd cleaned up the uterus and starting to close, the anesthetist tells me, doctor, your patient is not breathing. Because I was still inside, I, you studied biology, you know that big blood vessel called the iota. I put my arm there, hand, and it was actually, there was no pulse, she was gone. So I told the anesthetist, make sure I don't disconnect anything, but I say it out loud, Lord, you know this lady has to take care of her baby. So I continued closing, closed the uterus. Uh, when I was closing the, what you call the stomach, the muscles of the abdominal wall, I had the lady make a sigh. She came back, that was at like 20 minutes later. So we filled the lady to the ward. In the morning, as I was doing the post-operation round, she sees me and begins praising and saying, thank you, thank you, wevare, wevare, munonga, mushaho. Saying, imbire na jenzire, na garuka. Then she said that she had been... Yes, that, oh, sorry, George. <laughs> that uh, I thought Kansime was giving you lessons. Now, yes, so she was saying that she was going, but then she had come back. Then she narrated what she encountered, that men escorted her to a throne where there was someone seated. As they were approaching, this person on the throne told them, the men, please take her back. She has to take care of her baby. The very words I used. No. Glory be to God. That testimony is worth a thousand scriptures. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So, your usefulness eh, might save you what? from uh, premature death, if I should say. You understand? Eh? Of course, it might not be death, but it might be something else. Hmm? When someone, when Joan says that, uh, ah, you know, eh? this person, God, you know, eh? no, this shouldn't happen to them because they are very useful to us at NIT. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen? Be useful. Hallelujah. Amen? Okay? So he says that for I am hard pressed between the two, okay, between the two, either to stay here on earth or to die and, you know, he says, I'm hard pressed between the two, okay, that is verse 23, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, okay, dying is far better, you know? okay, to die is gain. Nevertheless, verse 24, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. So Paul now is thinking about the people. He wants to be a blessing to them. Okay? They want to be a parasite. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 25, and being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. Hallelujah. He's like, I've decided I want to go. Now, let me hang around, you know, for some time, okay, to be useful to you. Okay? When you narrated that experience, I remember when I was doing my internship in Hoima, okay? So we'd be in theater working on someone, and then they'll start man eh, to do stuff like man, <laughs> like they are going. Okay, then we had an, an anesthetist. He was called Magara. Okay, <laughs> Magara. And he wasn't so good, you could tell he's, he's not a good anesthetist. Okay, so all those things you guys would do on the, on the table was his fault. He hadn't put them to sleep well, eh, you know. So, you know, why, you know, eh? So then he would say that, you know, 
Some of these people, they come with spirits of death. <laughs> you know, I always used to use that. You know, some of these guys, they come with, with spirit of death just to die here and, you know, mess us up. <laughs> and uh, I just remember that, I think, uh, yesterday, and I began to laugh. So he had uh, a technical what? A technical whatever. Like I said, anyway, so there were two anaphetes. So one was that Magara. The other one was called Chiza. A very interesting man, eh? but also very hard, very... When you, when you decided to be bad, you will be bad. When you decided to be good, to give you care, be about how you mouth, you know, as in eh, info on people if you want it. <laughs> he was a very good man. But when he decided to be bad, okay, now there, there are those days when you will be like, he's not going to work. So he's on duty. He's the anathetist on duty, the only anathetist on, on duty. Okay? So you are sleeping, interns, at midnight they wake you up. They have brought a woman from Changwali Health Center. Obstructed labor, she has to be run to theater. Okay, so you wake up, intern, you know, interns are basically slaves, slaves, slaves. And so you wake up, because now you have to, to mobilize the swan so there, swan so you just had a nurse is there, a midwife is there, a nurse is of course, number one, you know. So you go to wake up Kiza. You know, eh? No cartoons, because a woman is dying, man. Eh? Kiza would be like, you know, <laughs> and he would say, you know, I told you what? <laughs> During the day, I am sick. I have diarrhea. The, I told you. <laughs> huh? They say, please, kid, come, man. Eh? You know, if the woman, if something happens to her, the first people responsible are interns. Eh? You know, can you imagine? <laughs> interns. The other guys who sent her at midnight had that woman the entire day. Now they see that deep in the night. And now, if something happens to one now, it is we who are responsible. It's very stupid, you know. <laughs> and so, Kiza, I told you, I have died. Then again, you say, now, you want me to come? Hmm? In? In? Theater. And as I'm, we are working on the lady, I mess myself up. <laughs> then, Museke. <laughs> As in, I mess myself up, then you will laugh. So is that what you want? You just want to laugh. If what? So now what do you do to a guy like that? So you also now, you, 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 you protect yourselves. You write in the file quickly. At 12.15, we call the anathetist. The anathetist was unable to come. Movie one day, come on, come on, record. If anything happens, yourself. Okay, as you think of what to do, either to send the chick to wherever. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, Paul says that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. Hallelujah. Okay? So, be what? Be useful. Paul, you know, he, was, he even decided eh, not to go to heaven. He's like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to stay around. You understand? Eh? Hmm? Really, I'm preaching to, to you, eh, okay? This message is not for Watoto Church or what? Eh? It is for LIT. Eh? <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay, be useful. Eh? Be what? Hmm? Useful. Hallelujah. All right? Okay? Hallelujah. So we have talked about being useful. Eh? All right? But now we also want to talk, you know, useful when you're around. Now we also want to talk about that other, that other 
a bit of what? Departing. All right? For in verse 23, it says, For I am hard, I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. All right? You see, um, you know, we, every now and again, eh, we have to, to go back you know, to the basics of our salvation. Eh? Okay? You'll be amazed at what you think is a basic thing. Some people don't know it. Hmm? That's why I was telling some people last Sunday that, for example, if you're going to preach, eh, God has given an opportunity to preach somewhere or in LAT. You know, there's a mentality, either it is an age issue, eh? youthfulness or stupidity. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> there's this thing, thinking that, he, that is someone has to be hardcore stuff, eh? deep, eh? you understand? Eh? Like you have to say, like, you know, eh? Uh, but that's not the case. I mean, uh, now, when you do that, there are times when you miss something basic that God wants to teach some people within a congregation. Do you understand? Eh? You see, you have to understand that when you're in a group, eh, okay, there are, let's say, a church, for example, here, there are different levels of growth. Now, for example, we have kids, eh? There's some things I'm saying now. There's some who go here. They haven't understood anything. Do you understand? Eh? Okay, so you see, eh? there are different levels of growth, spiritual growth. Okay, different levels of spiritual knowledge, okay, among the people in the same congregation. You understand? And, and knowledge doesn't, some, it doesn't necessarily mean that if someone has been born again for a long time, then they know the basics. You will be shocked, man. Do you understand? Eh? And so, one of the basics which God would want us to, uh, to, to remind ourselves today, and for some people to learn, actually, is that when a Christian who has been working with God, when they die, okay, they go to heaven. All right? They go where? They go to heaven. All right? Now, there are some people who just think that that is so, just because they hear it. Eh? But they don't, if a Muslim put them on the spot, show me. Man, guys wouldn't have a scripture. You understand? They say, well, I don't know, but for me, what? For me, that's what I think. Because every time we die and we have a funeral, what? service at St. Paul, okay, they say the person is going to heaven. <laughs> All right? Glory be to God. Okay, now, one of the scriptures that, that shows you that when a Christian, okay, and these days I often add, who has been walking with God. <laughs> I left that thing of every Christian, you know, eh? okay, you, are, you got saved in P2, Shoot, the moment you die, heaven. Man, I left that thing because it's not there in the Bible. All right? It's not there, what? In the scriptures. Hallelujah. Okay? So, it says, it says what? Verse 23, that he says that having a desire to depart and be with Christ. When a Christian departs, when their spirit leaves the body, okay, okay, they are with Christ. And where is Christ? Where is Jesus? Jesus is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen? Hmm? There are people, I think, the Seventh-day Adventists or some JWs eh, who say there's something called a soul sleep. At the moment you die, you're somewhere chilling, sleeping, eh? the, you, they are just, you know, eh? and then one day you get out of your sleep. You understand? Eh? Those teachings are there. You understand? But here saying to depart 
and be with Christ. Glory be to God. If you have decided that you're no longer going to be useful. <laughs> and that is a joke, amen? All right? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 also says the same thing. Paul says, we are confident, yes, we are pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Okay? Absent from the body, the rule you, the spirit man, you, the spirit you. When you are absent from this body, okay, you are what? Present with the Lord. Hallelujah. And by the way, you're not in purgatory. Eden, Catholics say that when you die, you first go to some place. As you wait and your sins are forgiven and you suffer a bit, then after that, as chaps pray for you all the time, Lord, forgive him, remember, you know, eh? then one day God will take you out of that place and take you to heaven. Okay? That is nonsense. Eh? All right? You understand? A Christian walking with the Lord, when you're absent from the body, you're present with what? With the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen? Hmm? And by the way, for those sinners, they are in hell straight. Also. Eh? Rather, not also, but on the other hand. You know? They're where? In hell. So the rubbish you guys love of rest in peace. Hmm? R-I-P. Eh? M-H. M-H what? Yeah, that MH, it is rubbish. Eh? You just and, and you see, when you are now like you, when you really know the truth, hmm? and you continue to say it, to use those things, eh? you're responsible for encouraging for, you know, people to think, you know, that there is hope eh? after they have what? But you're responsible. You know, eh? Some of the guys I'm angry with, eh? like Catholic priests, some Anglican chaps, who have made guys feel at ease. For eh? you know, ah, ah, when you are Abraham's age, you are baptized. Ah, ah, you, you kawa. I mean, they propagate. So kids grow up eh? with that thing of I was baptized when I was in what? No. In kindergarten, <laughs> you know, oh, how many, you know, so I'm, I am okay. Can you imagine you make a guy feel comfortable through his adult life, eh? and they're going, now, you know, eh? now your punishment is going to be worse eh, than some other guys. By the way, there are degrees of punishment in hell. Eh? You know that. Eh? You see, eh? this is casually making guys feel kawa. I know that thing hurts me. <laughs> all right? Church of Uganda, some of them, all, all of them, you know, when you refer to all guys, you know, you Christians, you should accept Jesus. You Christians, you should accept Jesus. No, if someone has never accepted Jesus, they don't Christians. So the moment you refer to them as Christians, you're making them comfortable. Did I now get saved for what? I'm a Christian. They're like, but this reverend also, he's, he's a fool. He's, he's saying, we're Christian. I tell you, we should accept Christ. What's that? You see, eh? Okay, now, those things of rest in peace. Hmm? Of course, this is just me, okay? This is not God speaking, just me. Okay, you're, you're playing a part in making people what? That when they die, they will, you will say you're rest in peace for them, eh? And man, your God will what? Will make them will say, okay, man, yeah? George has been praying for you to rest in peace, so let me answer his prayer. 
Hmm? All right? I think it's deadly, man. Deadly, deadly, deadly. As in, you don't have to say it. <laughs> okay? You can just say, may God comfort the family, the buried family. You can find a wise word. What? You don't have to say it. You don't have to write it. Do you understand? Mukamba amu amu jiris what is it? A what? Amula muze chisa as in go to judge him or her with mercy. That is not there. Mazevili <laughs> mujo, you know. <laughs> There's no mercy. Mercy has what? It has ended. Do you understand? Eh? Hmm? You know, sometimes we, balokole, we fail God in, in so many ways. We know the truth, but somehow when we get out there, eh, we somehow cower and man. Eh? You're like, man, the crowd, you know, I'm alone now. I have to, you know. Are you, as in, do you understand? Eh? Hmm? Okay? Hallelujah. Okay, so, to depart, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. But, it was not always the case. There was a time before Jesus died when all the people who would die, all those who are working with God, they actually didn't didn't go to heaven. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31 says, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple. And you know the story, eh? There was a rich man, okay, rich, and there was a poor man, Lazarus. So, the rich man died, okay, or oh, first, the poor man died, and the, now, Anyway, and he went to a place which the Bible calls Abraham's bosom. All right? It was a good place. Okay? And the poor man, the rich man, went to another place. Hades, okay? Well, it was hot. Okay? It was hot. Now, just to note, eh? The rich man didn't go to that bad place just because he was rich. <laughs> All right? The things are important eh, to what? <laughs> to say, the same basic if you've been born again for years and you are in a good church. Eh? But for some people, man, eh, they can get this story and show you how the rich are not going to heaven. Don't you see the rich man? Jesus said it. And don't you see the poor man? Went to Abraham's bosom, paradise. This man, you'll be stuck when the guy shows you we know. You know, eh? <laughs> okay? He shows you, you know, eh? Same man, you've got guy, eh? You've to be in the Navy, they coward. Hmm? And so, so you see, so any, the poor man was a righteous man also. He was poor but righteous. Do you understand, eh? All right, so he goes to that place. Okay, now that place wasn't heaven because, as you know the story, okay, uh, and it, it was like this hall, all right, and there are two partitions. One part is Abraham's bosom where all the righteous would go when they would die. And then the other part, okay, was Hades fire there. And you can't cross. Eh? You can't do what? Cross. There's a gulf in between here. You can't cross it. Alright? No purgatory. <laughs> Alright? You can't get from Hades to Eurasian. You do things are not there. Glory be to God. So that place, Abraham's bosom was the waiting area, the waiting place for the righteous saints. They couldn't go to heaven because their sins, in a sense, hadn't been really wiped out. You understand? Eh? They had offered sacrifices for their sins, but at that time, 
their sins were just covered. They didn't yet been wiped out. You understand? Because the blood of goats and you know uh, bulls, eh? we cannot take away a human beings what sins. It is not the cow which sins. So how can its blood? You, you understand? Eh? All right? It, it needed the blood of a, a, a righteous. And so, and so when Jesus died, okay, the sins which were covered were now wiped away completely. All right? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen? And after that, that's when our people, okay, when you die in the Lord, you go to heaven. Okay? But let's read also Luke chapter 23, verse 39 to 43 says, when Jesus was on the cross, eh? okay, it says that then one of the criminals who who were hanged with him, okay, blasphemed eh, with Jesus, saying, If you're the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, seeing you're under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man, okay, talking about Jesus, has done nothing wrong. Then that's criminal, okay, say to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, assuredly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Okay? Remember, the righteous saints were going to Abraham's. Yeah, so this man, the criminal, was going to the same place because remember he repents on the cross so he was going to the same place and Jesus calls that place paradise and Jesus actually also went there you understand eh? because he said it you understand he said it today okay the moment we depart <laughs> I and you depart from the body we shall be together in paradise Abraham's bosom Glory be to God. Okay? Hallelujah. He didn't say you'll be with me in heaven. It wasn't yet time for what? For going to heaven. Okay? Now Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15 says that he, Jesus, is a mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant. All right? redemption of the what? Of the transgression, of the sins. Okay? Those sins hadn't yet been really wiped away. They were there. And it is only Jesus who comes to pay for them. Okay? So he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called okay? Now guys like Abraham, guys like Lazarus, okay? All the righteous saints who are down there, okay? That they may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Glory be to God. They only receive the promise of eternal inheritance after the blood of Jesus has been shed for their sins. Prior to that, they were waiting as they look at people who are suffering, the unrighteous. Glory be to God. All right? Amen? So when Jesus dies, he sheds his, uh, his blood for that. Then in Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 8, it says that when he, Jesus, ascended on high, all right, he led captivity captive. Okay? Captivity were those saints who were held up in Abraham's bosom. They couldn't get out. Do you understand? It was the waiting area. Do you understand? Okay, but when Jesus ascended, and I believe this is talking about when he was going back to heaven, okay, it says that he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now, this he ascended, what does it mean? 
but that he also first descended. Okay, Abraham's bosom was, you know, eh? beneath, down there. Do you understand? So Jesus first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Okay? And then he says in 10 that he who descended is also the one who ascended. He went down there, okay? And of course he resurrected, like you know. All right? And when he was ascending on high, going to heaven, he led captivity captive. Okay? He went with Abraham and Lazarus and all those guys. And I'm convinced that Adam was among them. Glory be to God. So those things of saying that man, eh, this guy Adam, eh, the first thing I'll do when I go to heaven eh, okay, is to look for Adam and, you know, eh, all those things of saying that man, Adam, must be in hell. Eh? I don't think he is. The guy who repented. That's why you remember God who caused him with the skin of the animal. Okay? Blood was shed. You remember? The skin was got, in, was got from an animal. So God killed an animal. Blood was shed eh? okay? to cover Adam, cover these sins. Adam is in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. And by the way, he's waiting for you, his grandkids. Amen? You are Abraham's kids, grandkids. Okay? So when Jesus ascended, okay, after he had shed his blood, when going back to heaven, he went with these guys. Glory be to God. And henceforth, from that time, when a Christian departs, when your spirit departs from the body, it is immediately present with the Lord where he is in heaven, not in the lower parts of the earth. Glory be to God. You're not somewhere or sleeping in the grave somewhere. Well, what is in the grave is your body. Do you understand? But your spirit, the rule you, is where? With the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm? Amen? I know from the things I've heard, like, praise his mom is in heaven. Hmm? The lady I told you about last week, Carol, the doctor, Carol Nyango Makumbi. Okay? Very wonderful lady. Eh? Yeah. Okay? She died. I eh? had cancer. You know? Good to know that she had cancer or the breast on her honeymoon. <laughs> you know, eh? honeymoon. Okay? She was a dog, so, so somehow she, fe oh, she felt man. Eh? Honeymoon. Eh? So there too, I think. Eh? They can't, you know, whatever. They got a kid, I think, like seven years into a marriage because, anyway, you know, miraculously, by the way, they got a kid then and they considered her cancer free, as in a cancer. It's called what? A survivor, eh? like healed. Then a few years later, the thing came back. All right? They prayed, they believed God and stuff, but somehow, okay? She passed on, eh? okay? She passed on, eh? okay? Bridget, you know, she was here last Sunday. They were tight friends eh? with Carol. And um, so she tells me that um, when Carol passed away, of course, Bridget got to know. And uh, yeah, so she was very disturbed. She couldn't go to sleep. Eh? You remember Carol Nyango? Yeah. Yeah, you know, she was very, so she spent most of the time at night praying in tongues. Then at around 5.30, she dozes off. Okay? And, you know, when, she, when that happened, she had a dream. All right? And in the dream, she meets Okaro. 
beautifully dressed in white and all golden stuff, eh? beautifully dressed. Okay? And she said that it seemed like she was coming out of like the head, a headmaster's office. Eh? Headmaster's office? Like it was on earth. Eh? All right? It was on earth 2011. Eh? But beautifully dressed, you know, no sickness anymore, you know, looking very marvelous, you know? So, uh, yeah, and she was working out of the headmaster's office, and Bridget had the sense that she had cleared it. Eh? You know, in school or like uni, when man, you, eh, you, before you, like, you graduate, you, you have to first clear. And so, Carol was working out of it, like she had cleared everything. All right? And then, Bridget asks her that when is your funeral? Okay? Funeral or burial? Then Okaro says, I don't know, but I will be there for the funeral service. Hallelujah. I don't know, but I will be. She was looking pretty, you know, eh? Now, this is a few hours after she had what? Who passed on. And this person has a dream. Okay? There's another... Another experience I had, of, you know, from the mother, all right, because there was, there's a recording of the funeral the service, all right, and, and the mother was saying some of the things Carol said, you know, just before the spirit departed from the body, okay? Basically, evidence that Carol is in heaven. Glory be to God. She's absent from the body, Okay? But present with the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen? Amen. You know, she had finished her stuff. Of course, Bambi, there's a seven-year-old, I think, you know. She had one kid. And, uh, yeah. But God will sort that one out. God will do what? Sort that one out. I don't know whether he will give uh, the husband, what? <laughs> and then God will do what? We'll sort the, the guy out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay? I remember some lady, in fact, I wrote about her. I first got to know her from the chef. You know? Like every after, in the, in the, I, I would eat, like every after the service, I would go to the chef. So, there was a lady there, which was like in her yeah, 60s, who I befriended. Eh? Because one time I saw her reading a Christian book. And I was like, wow. You know, this. So I went to her, I was like, excuse me, madam, what, how are you? I'm so and so. What, that book, what, you know? She said, hey, what? Yeah? Okay, you know, what, and so. <laughs> and so we became friends and stuff, you know? And yeah, so one time, she died, eh? Bambi, she died. A very wonderful woman. <laughs> very wonderful what? Woman. Women are wonderful, eh? But there are some women who are more wonderful than us. <laughs> Those who have a, a godly touch. Hallelujah, eh? A, a godly touch makes all the difference. And not this thing where you are what, eh? When you are with, you are what? God. Then now when you are with what? You, you know, eh? You somehow, eh? Peer pressure who gets you to behave like the world, to behave and to dress like a, you understand. Yeah? And so she died now at a funeral, okay? The pastor shared that, yeah, yeah, Tumwine, uh, he shared that he had given her a prophecy, okay? Gave her a, a prophecy in the week, okay? In the week, he gave her a prophecy saying that, you know, all the troubles you have known, okay, you have known, you're going to see them no more. All right? Even the person didn't know what he was talking about. All right? Because and he shared some issues. Eh? I, I, know, I know about, you know, and some of them, I think the man had left her. And he shared issues by him, yeah? but she loved the Lord. Okay? This woman... Never used to drive. Eh? She was staying, I think, in Mbuya. 
a 60 something very bad you know eh? she will every sunday from mbuya to attend a church in buat you know that church before you, you, you <laughs> in buat every what sunday na mumusula wano naria just no kuja ku church you are you can't keep time mbuya you know, so I would meet her at the church because she was coming from church and she would pass by for lunch because I think, yeah, the owner of the chef is her brother. You see, eh? And then, man, eh? Then she was one of the intercessors in that church. She wasn't useless. Do you understand, eh? Then she would tell you the progi for the week, what she was going to do to prove her what, eh? And you're like, man, eh? ah, you know, eh? but eh, I love those old women. If you want to receive a blessing, eh? those old women who have been, who have worked with the Lord for years, eh? they have something eh? you might never get from anywhere else. Not for you, just you what, you say, uh, what, eh? you know, the vina can be what, eh? but man, eh? I remember years ago, I would look out for them, eh? You know, eh? I remember even when I was in the States for school, I went for a Maurice Cerro, like a conference, and while there I saw an old woman, a conference man. So, man, I was like, you know, some, I was like, how do I get to this chick? All right? My agents were running after young girls. All right? For me, I was running after old women, man. So, I had white hair, white seated, white eh? A white woman, then I was like, how do I get to this chick? Then some, I think, when I saw she was alone, what? Eh? Her grandkids are left. I went, man. I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm so and so, what, you know? Then she, she said, you know, I can see you love God. Then she pulled out a paper from her bag, eh, which had a story of some experience she had, eh, I think in the 40s, a heavenly experience she had. She's like, man, you take this and read it, man. I remember for years, that thing where I came back together with that paper, man, to the treasure. Right now, I don't know why it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You, you know, I've just done this, huh? But, I, you know, eh? Then she prayed for me, she blessed me. You know, eh? Man, old women who have, and you see, they might not have the knowledge eh, that you have, eh, how to explain a certain mystery in the Bible, what, eh, but man, eh, they know the Lord. Not all of them, eh, okay? <laughs> some who are, eh. But you know, eh, glory be to God. I'm telling you, eh, hmm, to this day, by the way, you know, I, every time I see an old woman, Woman, uh, local, eh? there's uh, an attraction eh, I have for them. Eh? I always want to talk to them. Eh? They can pass on you something, eh? even just a statement. They can tell you one thing which might save you, your life, man, which can prove to be a blessing. Just that one thing, and you do it, and you're sorted for life. Glory be to God. And so this lady died. Okay, but in the week, <laughs> her pastor you and I, a, a what? <laughs> you know, there are some people who think that, hey man, pastor, be a yogeda, you know, so let me not use you. Okay, so you had given your prophet that what? <laughs> the what? Oh, yeah, all your issues, you're going to know them no more. Then, before she walked out of church, okay, she told the pastor, Mm -hmm. She said, and now you see, I am going away to seek the Lord. And I'm going to have a long time to seek the Lord. So you won't see me in a long time. Do you remember that story I shared with eh? She said, I'm going away for a long time to seek the Lord. You know, eh? So I guess that she was going to the mountain. She said, the pastor, you know, talking to Kunda for a long time. Eh? And that was it. Okay? In a few days, they get news. She had died in the house. She had um, collapsed. I think she was next to a fire water. 
when she collapsed and by the time they go to know her that she had died, no? well, part of her body was burned. But that's no problem. No? That's not what killed her, you understand? Yeah? And even then, she had departed. She was absent from the body. So the fire was burning. It wasn't burning her, in a sense, you understand? <laughs> she was present with the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So, be useful. Before you depart, I bet that some of you are not going to depart. Okay? According to Esther. Okay, Jesus is coming back soon. So some of you are going to be, you're going to be found, okay, and you will, okay? You won't die, eh? all right? But the thing is, in the meantime, eh, before the rapture or before you, you decide to depart, be useful. Be what? Be useful. Okay? You know the gifts you have, eh? you adults. The kids might not know eh, what their gifts are, okay? But you adults, you know the gifts you have. Eh? Put them to work. Hallelujah. Be a blessing. Eh? Live for Christ by letting him minister to others through you. Hallelujah. Okay? If you have a, the Bible says if you have a gift of giving, okay, do it generously, with generosity. Hmm? Carol, eh? I knew her a bit. Eh? Not so much. I knew her a bit. All right? You know, she was this kind. Man. You know those people who just, she enters here and she just lightens up. You understand? Everyone, she's called, you know, smiling. She was always smiling. Smiling like, eh? she was concerned about everyone. Eh? Like she didn't know you, then she asked you what's up, then you're at work. She said, you know, eh? then all of a sudden, you, it's like you've known each other for 50 years. Eh? She's called the next, you know, eh, she was that kind, eh, very wonderful what? lady. Hallelujah. So you can see the maybe, probably, well, n n not uh, probably, but most, yeah, any, that was a gift. Okay, the ability to encourage people, the ability to m make people feel good. You know what I mean, eh? Okay, some of you, you have it, but after church, you just what? After the worship team has entertained you, you just, whew, you know, now you're not using your gift, okay, for at least your local church. Hallelujah. Maybe you're using it on your stepmother, I don't know, but you know. Eh? <laughs> and that's good, eh? If you make your stepmother feel encouraged, you know, that we're not going to, to take the property. <laughs> we shall share with you because over the moment, you took care of our dad. Hmm? Hallelujah. Some of those ladies have been good eh? to fathers, you understand? Eh? One of the, <laughs> the easiest way of making a, a guy die quickly eh? Eh? is if his wife dies eh? and then he remains a single for, you understand? Like especially if he can what? Remarry. You know, okay, women, women are wonderful. They have that ability of what? Imparting life. <laughs> I don't know what. A guy with. Ay, 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 ay. They are, I heard of a family. This is the first Sunday when I haven't felt like you guys are in a hurry to live like pastor with the what? I heard of a family. So, so there was a couple. A couple. The wife passed on. Hmm? And I guess they, they had girls or more girls than who boys. And it is always daughters. Eh? Who, what? <laughs> They're like, wow, our dad, what? When they see him with another woman, say, no, what? Uh, you know, eh? They could have said the guy from what? Bambi, who married someone else. <laughs> now, one day, they went to visit him. Now remember, he's alone in the house. For them, they are, you know, eh? they, are, they are guys, what? <laughs> so one day, it hit them. They went to visit the guy. It's around maybe like midday. 
go to the door and they knocked, no one is opening. You know, the chap is in there. In fact, what first messed them up, there was one shoe at the, what? At the entry. One shoe, one sock. And the point is, the guy became a drunkard. Kachenga tezimu ya eri, what? Ya jirese, mukubo, came back. You can imagine. Can you imagine, Juliana? You know, eh? then they found the guy in the, the guy was going to die. That's when they realized, man, eh? our father needs a wife. Someone take care of him. And somehow, he got a wife, and man, the guy came back to life. Fukemboko <laughs> once again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some women don't like that. This is story there, but uh, hmm? okay. have uh, a life, you know, eh? anyway, I won't tell you, have an experience in that thing, eh? <laughs> but the Bible says, for I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But he says, I'll hang on for your progress. Hallelujah. Amen. And remember, like I said, eh? Jesus said, I am coming back quickly and my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his deeds. Hallelujah. Revelation 22, verse 12. I'm coming back. So whatever you do, for the brethren, you're going to be rewarded. Hallelujah. When you give someone, you now there are people, just a smile. Eh? Hallelujah. Just a smile eh? from them. They have that ability. They just smile at somebody and people feel, eh? feel loved. Okay, use that gift. The people who have that gift of checking on, on people. For me, I cannot know. I don't have it. Maybe I have it. And God is like, but you haven't discovered it. You have it, Mose, my guy. What? Ojirina gift. All right. All right. And put that what? Gift to what? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah? Juliana seems to be good with the kids. You know, I don't know whether it's a gift or I don't know either they like you or it is your gift you, you like, you know. Now I was getting some news from Abigail in the week. And then you know, start, use your gifts, people. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now these are basic, this seems to be a basic thing, but it is very important to God. God loves people and he wants to reach out to them, and He's like, I'm looking for someone to walk through to bless my people. And he's like, Samo. You know, he's called Samo? Yeah. Eh? Samo for you, what? There's Samo, there's any, whatever. Young man, use your gift, amen? Hmm? Or a quiz. I don't know what your gift is. Hmm? Hallelujah. And Jesus said, I'm coming back quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Glory be to God. Thank you, Pastor Moses, for that great sermon. Yes. Um, it's time for us to give. Yeah, it's more blessed for us to give than to receive. But as we give, Joan has something to say. Praise God. Praise God, church. Amen. We are blessed. Yes. yes, usually I share with pastor the things that maybe I feel about the sermon. I share with him after the service. But then I realized today as he was preaching that no... Pastor already sometimes knows those things. He knows that he's on the mulamua, yeah? Um, and so I decided to come and share with you my experience this morning so that you may just really get encouraged about what we have just heard. 
So this morning, I got up and I had to drop my nephew at the University of Makere. So I drove, we went, and the young man, he's 16 years, and he loves the Lord. So he started engaging me on things to do with healing and death and reading apologetics and getting involved in, in the um, politics of the U.S. And you know how youths can be, teenagers. He says our politics is boring. So um, one of the things that along our discussion, I decided I just found my sh myself sharing with him from Philippians 1, 22 to 25. For me, because now we're talking about healing, and, and I told him that, you know, to die, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. So when we came to church and pastor was sharing from that, I'm like, okay, God. But before that, I'd ask God, usually, I'm like, God, send me a dream about the service or talk to me about the things that we are talking about, that LIT, that we may not, you know, the confidence that comes with knowing that you've nailed the will of God. And for me, that is such a big thing. For people who know me, it is such a big thing to know that we are doing things by God. Like we are right in the middle of the will of God. So when Pastor shared again from that verse, I'm like, yeah, but as, as I was listening to him, I was like, but you see, he shared last weekend, last Sunday, it's only right that he was going to continue with what he shared on last Sunday. Then this, this was the light bulb moment for me when Pastor shared that story of Kenneth Hagin. It is the story I used this morning when I was talking to this young boy about that guy who went to heaven and had to be sent back. Glory to God. So Pastor gets his paper and he's like, eh, and he's joking and he's laughing like, now I came with my scriptures, now, you know. So he feels he's getting off of what he had actually prepared. Now, unless your pastor, please do not do that when you come up here. But I want to let you know that if it is basic to God and he tells you to do it, do it. It's important. Pay attention to it. Glory to God. So as he was sharing about this experience, you know, of, you know, because I was like, this is what I was telling the young man. I wish I had just, instead of taking him to campus, I wish I had just, in a way, <laughs> brought him to LAT this morning. And he knows that there is God. God speaks to people. God speaks through people. So as Pastor went on, he started to share. He started sharing the story about the late Carol Onyango. And again, after Kenneth Hagin's experience, when I was talking to, talking to this young man, I shared with him the late Carol Onyango's experience and how she's in heaven. I shared about the dream. So for me, as Joan, that was enough. But I just, I felt like I cannot leave church without encouraging you people. But it's a basic sermon. But if, if, any, if, if there is any sign that you want to know that God has spoken to you this morning, just take my experience today. Glory to God. Use your gifts. Follow what pastor has told you. Just use your gift. You have something. Use it to bless someone. Take the sermon seriously. Glory to God. And, and I kept on saying, I'm not going to... To run up here, if you have a movie money in LAT, if it's time to close, you close. But then Pastor said, But today you're not in a hurry to leave. I took it as a cue. Glory to God. <laughs> I took it as a cue. God telling me, Uh huh, you go. If, if you get stopped, I'll tell him, But I told you that people were not in a hurry to leave. Why did you stop John from talking? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So let us use our gifts. Please listen to the sermons and be encouraged. Glory to God. And thank you so much, Pastor. Last Adam Tabernacle, Christ for the Nations.